All right, folks. In this video, we're going to talk about the first topic of Chapter Eight: Solution Concentration and Stoichiometry. We will talk about some important concepts, and then we will do some calculations. First thing is let's define solution concentration. Okay. Well, solution concentration is a parameter that can tell us um, how concentrated a solution is. Okay. Um, first thing is let's define solution. Solution means a mixture with two components. Okay. One is solute, the other one is solvent. So these are the two basic components of a sol solution. Well, then what's the difference between solute and solvent? Solute is the minority com component. Solvent is the majority component. Let me give you one example. If you dissolve, let's see, 15.0 uh, 15 gram of um, ethanol, okay, CH3, CH2, this is alcohol. Okay, if you dissolve this much of alcohol in 100.0 gram of water, well, you can see that to, that ethanol will dissolve in um, water to give you a transparent solution. Okay, no doubt about that. Very high solubility. Anyway, so you can make a solution with these two components. And how do we tell well, which one is a minority component and uh, which one is a majority comp uh, component? You just need to take a look at the mass. Okay. Well, here, for ethanol, it is only 15 gram. For water, 100 gram. Therefore, ethanol is the solute. Water, in this particular case, is going to be the solvent. But how about if we switch? If we flip to dissolve 15.0 gram of water in 100.0 gram of ethanol, then in this case, Water would be the solute, and ethanol would be the solvent. Okay, so this is how we um, define solute and solvent. Now, if your solution has a lot of solute particles, then we say that this is going to be concentrated solution. And uh, if your solution has, uh, you know, not too many solute particles, then we say this is dilute, dil dilute solution. Of course, you know, um, this is not that very clear how concentrated is concentrated enough. So that's why we need to have a, a parameter for us to measure, to, to tell us specifically how concentrated the solution is. Okay? So that's why we have molarity. Um, this is a concentration. We have molarity to tell us um, the specific concentration of a solution. Well, molarity sometimes it also called the molar concentration. Okay, molar concentration. So do not get surprised if you see this term concentration in some other textbook. Okay, and we use capital M to represent um, molarity or molar concentration. Now, um, what's the um, the equation? Well, molarity. Oops. Capital M equals to mole number of solutes, mole number of solutes divided by the volume of solution. Okay, this is going to be a liter, of course, for the volume, and on top it's going to be in the mole number. Okay. Therefore, for the unit of molar concentration, okay, so it's going to be, let me write it here, units of molar concentration, it's going to be mole per liter. Okay. You can write the units as capital M, but you can also write that as mole per liter. Okay. So this is how we define um, molarity. Okay, now based on the definition of molarity or molar concentration, you see that in order to prepare a solution with a certain concentration, you need to know two things. The first one is the mole number of solute. The second thing is the volume of the solution. Okay, um, Let's take a look at this slide. This slide tells us um, how we use a volumetric flask to prepare um, a solution with a certain molar concentration. 
Well, this funny looking flask is called the volumetric flask. What happened here is, um, if you prepare a solution, once the meniscus curve of the solution reach the bottom of the meniscus curve of the solution reach this blue mark here, then the volume of your solution would be one liter. Okay, would be one liter, exactly one liter. And uh, the precision of volumetric flask usually will be two decimal places. So this volumetric flask actually would be 1.00 liter when the meniscus curve reached this blue mark. Okay, so um, this uh, picture shows us uh, how you prepare um, um, a, um, a sodium hydro one mole per liter of the sodium chloride solution. You measure 58.44 gram of sodium chloride. That's exactly 1.00 mole per liter, mole, okay? Um, and then you add this solid into this volumetric flask, and then you add water to dissolve the solid, and then uh, add water to the volumetric flask until the bottom of the meniscus curve reach this blue line. Okay, so the volume of the sol solution is one liter. The concentration of the solution is going to be 1.00 per liter. So what happened here is you have 1.00 mole sodium hydroxide divided by 1.00 liter volume of the sol solution. That's going to be 1.00 mole per liter. Okay, I'll write it here. 1.00 mole per liter. Okay, so sometimes I'll use this mole per liter. So when we do a conversion between the mole number and the molar concentration or the volume and the molar concentration. Okay, so um, by showing those two units, um, I think it sometimes it could be helpful. Now let's take a look at this example. If you dissolve 33.1 gram of the sodium hydroxide in water to make a two liter solution, calculate the molarity. Formula weight of sodium hydroxide is given. But of course, um, if, I, if this is not given, I expect you know how to calculate the formula weight of uh, sodium hydroxide. Now this is a very simple and straightforward calculation. Um, target is to calculate the um, mo molarity and based on the definition of molarity that's going to be the mole number of the solute well here mole number of the solute the solute would be sodium hydroxide okay because you on you only have 33.1 gram and um, that is way much less than water you need to prepare 2.00 liter of solution Therefore, mole number of sodium hydroxide divided by the volume of the concentration of volume of the solution, okay, of the solution, which is I'll write it here. Solution. This is a definition of the molar concentration of this sodium hydroxide solution. Mole number is going to be thirty-one point one gram. This is a conversion between the mass and mole number. Formula weight should be at the bottom and one more on top. Okay. So this is the mole number. The bottom is going to be the volume of solution, which is given here 2.00 liter. 2.00 liter. And if you do the calculation, it will be 0 0.414 mole per liter. Okay, so this is how we um, apply the definition of molar concentration um, to identify the specific value of a solution. All right, now let's take a look at this slide. Well, this slide is about the solution dilution. Why do we need to take uh, talk about this? Well, in a chemical lab or a biochemistry lab or biology lab or you know some medical science labs, a very common practice or scenario is like this. Okay. Well, in my research, I need to use. Um, let's just use this one as an example. Okay. So, uh, this is about the calcium chloride solution. In my project, I need to use uh, one liter 
um, of calcium chloride solution, uh, solution with a concentration 0.500 mol per liter um, again and again and again because I need to repeat my experiments, right? Now, you have a 3 liter, let's just see that you have 3 liter of the calcium chloride solution with this concentration. So each time you use 1 liter, that means once you finish 3 experiments, you are going to use all of them. So what should we do in case like this? Well, you can prepare another 3 liter of calcium chloride solution and then but the problem is, you know, every time we prepare the solution, you need to do calculations about the um, solute, and you need to measure how much that is. Uh, it's a hustle, right? So what we can do in this kind of situation is you can prepare a stock solution with a higher concentration. And then when you need a diluted solution, then you can just use a certain amount of the stock solution and dilute that to the desired solution with the desired concentration. Okay, so that would be much easier. Now, here this picture tells us uh, how we solve this, how we use this uh, stock solution uh, with a 10.0 mol per liter of calcium chloride to prepare this uh, 3 liter of calcium chloride solution with 0.500 mol per liter concentration. What you need to do is well, you just need to use 0 0.150 liter of this 10.0 mol per liter stock solution. Add that into a 3 liter volumetric flask. And then add water to dilute that to 3 liter. And then the solution you have in this 3 liter volumetric flask would have a concentration of 0 0.500 mol per liter. Okay, and then you can use, you can just use, as you can see that you only need uh, one, 0 0.150 liter, 150 ml, to do this job. And this is much easier and much simpler. Okay, So uh, that's why if you go to a lab, a chemical lab, usually you will see a bunch of stock solutions, especially analytical solutions, because they are dealing with those kind of uh, solutions um, you know, a lot. Anyway, so... How do we calculate um, the desired? Uh, how, how do we calculate, for instance, how many ml or how many liter of the stock solution you need to prepare the desired solution for your research? Well, here for this particular case, let me break down the calculation and show you what is not changing during this solution dilution process. Look, when you have as 0 0.150 liter of 10.00 mol per liter of stock solution, you can calculate how many mol of calcium chloride you have. All right, so let me do a quick calculation and show you. It's going to be 0 0.150 liter times 10.0 mol per liter. Okay, so the results would be. 1.50 mol. This is the mole number of the calcium chloride solution in this much of um, um, stock solution. Now you use you dilute this 0 0.150 liter stock solution to 3 liter. Therefore, in this new solution or diluted solution the concentration of the calcium chloride would be 1.50 1 mole divided by the volume. It's going to be 3.00 liter, and that's going to be 0 0.500 mole per liter. Okay. Why do I want to show you this calculation? Well, this calculation shows us when you have certain amount of stock solution and dilute that to certain volume, the mole number of the solute is not changing. And based on this mechanism, we can use a very simple equation to help us calculate the, um, the uh, to do some calculation. Okay, so here this is the equation. It's going to be M1 V1 equals to M2 V2. Here, 
M1 is going to be the concentration of stock solution. Concentration of stock solution. Okay. V1 is the volume of the stock solution. I'll write it here. Okay. Volume of stock solution. And here, M2 is going to be the concentration of dilute. Diluted solution, okay. and V two is going to be the volume of diluted solution. Okay. All right, and this equal sign tells us where does this equal sign come from. This equal sign comes from the mechanism which is discussed. The mole number of the solute is not changing before and after the dilution. All right, let's take a look at this um, example um, to help us understand how we use this equation. Well, a stock solution of hydrochloric acid has a concentration of 0.500 mole per liter. This is a stock solution. How many ml of this stock solution you need to prepare 250 ml of 3.00 times 10 to the negative 3 mole per liter of hydrochloric solution? Well, this is diluted solution. As you can see, the concentration is lower. This is diluted solution. So the M2 is known, V2 is known, and M1 is known. I ask you to calculate V1. All right? So this is so we have a um, clear idea about what we are trying to do in this equation. We know M1, M2, V2, calculate V1. A very common question in regarding this equation is do I have to use a liter for volume? The answer is no. As long as you have the same unit for both V1 and V2, it doesn't matter what unit you need, you use. You can use both liter, you can use liter for both V1 and V2, or you can use male for both V1 and V2. It doesn't matter, but they have to be consistent with each other. Okay? In this case, since you are talking about how many male of the stock solution you need, um, if you need to prepare 250 male of the diluted solution, so we can just use male directly. Alright? So that tells us. 0 0.500 mole per liter okay, times V1 and equals to 3.00 uh, times 10 to the negative 3, this is M2, mole per liter times V2, that is 250 male, and the V1 would be just the two sides divided by 0 0.500 mole per liter. Okay. Calculation is very straightforward. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Um, but it requires you to set up the equation correctly okay, in order to get the answer right. And the calculation would be 1.50 mL. Okay. Um, this is this particular problem. Um, as I mentioned, that you don't have to use liter for V1 and V2. Um, but in this question, if you convert 250 ml to liter and do the calculation to find out the V1 in liter, then you can do one more step to convert liter of V1 to ml of V1. Okay, you should be able to get the same answer. Um, you just need to do more, you know, calculation, and uh, it will cost you more time. And if you use the mail directly, 
and it will save you um, a little bit of time. All right, this is the uh, solution dilution. Now let's take a look at uh, stoichiometry calculation involving solution concentration. We have a flow chart to help us. Volume A, volume B. Well, these are the two volumes for the reactant A, you know, the reagent A and B in the chemical reaction. Okay. How do we find out the relationship between the two? Well, you use the um, molar concentration as a bridge to find out the mole number of A first. Molar concentration of A, we use MA to represent. Okay, so by having this, you can find out the mole number of A. And then between the mole number of A and the mole number of B, it's going to be molar ratio. If the reaction is balanced, if the reaction equation is balanced, you should be able to find out the molar ratio by just checking the coefficients. Now, once you get the mole number of B, you can convert that to volume of B by using the molar concentration of B. Okay. And I don't know whether you remember the um, stoichiometry uh, calculation we discussed in the previous chapter. In that chapter, we use the molar mass, molar mass, to find out to convert from mass A to the mole number of A, mole number of B to mass A. Okay, very similar flow chart for us to follow. In this flow chart. We're going to use molar concentration of A and B. Let's take a look at this example. You have this balanced equation okay, between the sodium uh, sulfate, sulfate and the silver perchlorate. It generates two products. Okay, one is precipitate solid here. The other one is aqueous solution. What volume of 0 0.150 mole per liter of sodium, sulfur, sodium sulfide is required to completely react with 22.5 ml of 0 0.250 mole silver perchlorate. So you are talking about those two reactants in this case. It doesn't matter which one you define as the A or B. Um, in this particular case, let's see um, perchlorate uh, is A, since we know both, concentra both concentration and volume. Okay, so. Now, how do we set up the equation? Here, the first thing is you need to find out the mole number of uh, silver perchlorate. And uh, the volume is given as mL. So in order to find out the mole number of the silver perchlorate, you need to convert mL to liter. So that's the first thing that we need to do, 22.5 mL. Convert that to liter. Okay, one, one mL is 10 to the negative 3 liter. Remember the lowercase m is 10 to the negative 3. All right, this is from chapter E. Okay, times the molar concentration of uh, silver perchlorate. Okay, so that's going to be one liter. I'll write it here, okay. So 22.5 of silver perchlorate, so you can you can uh, follow sodium uh, silver perchlorate silver perchlorate okay one liter of the silver perchlorate okay is 0 0.250 mole silver perchlorate okay by labeling the chemical uh, formula, uh, I think that will help you better track what we are doing. Now, with this, we got the mole number of silver perchlorate. Now it's time for us to use molar ratio between silver perchlorate and sodium sulfate to find out the mole number of sodium sulfate. The molar ratio between these two reactants, remember, silver. The mole coefficient of 
silver perchlorate should be at the bottom because we want to cancel the silver perchlorate, right? Okay, so that means two mole silver perchlorate will react with one mole of sodium sulfide completely. Now, once you get this, we are right here, okay? Now the last step is to find out the volume of sodium sulfate. Again, we use the molar concentration of um, sodium sulfate to do the conversion. And uh, so how do we set it up? Remember right now, for this part, the units would be the sodium, uh, the mole number of sodium sulfate. So when you use concentration, the mole should be at the bottom. Okay, 0 0.150 mole of sodium sulfide in one liter sodium sulfate solution. Okay, so let's, now we can cancel the items that we need, that, that uh, we, we don't need, mail get canceled, liter get cancelled and mole number of the silver perchlorate get cancelled mole number of the sodium sulfide get cancelled so the last or final units that you have from this equation would be the liter volume of sodium sulfide in liter and if you do the calculation um, it will be 0 0.0188 liter Okay, uh, you don't have to use scientific uh, notation, but if you do, that equals to 1.88 times 10 to the negative 2 liter. This is how we do the calculation, uh, stoichiometry calculation involving solution. Um, we will do more practice in class.